Hello, this is Deidre Brill, and welcome to this presentation on medieval music. We'll begin by talking about musical notation. Songs were primarily learned via oral tradition in the Middle Ages, meaning that a person would sing a song, another person would listen to it, and then repeat it back. And we really only saw um, manuscripts take off um, as the Middle Ages progressed. And by the ninth century, choirs began to make music more complex. They began to sing multiple notes at the same time, harmonizing. And so we see manuscripts as this way to not only share and record musical lyrics, but also to record the way the sounds were supposed to sound. And this was done in the form of nooms or notes, which were written as little accent marks above the words in a text. And we can see that example right down here, these small dots and lines that are listed above the Latin text were rudimentary nooms called punctus. And these, this is sort of the earliest version of it where it's just a simple dot and it doesn't have much meaning until we start talking about pitch. Pitch is that which shows how high or how low a note is supposed to be in music. And so the position of the nooms indicated pitch. If the noom was listed higher, it meant a higher sound was supposed to occur. And we got better documentation of musical pitch in manuscripts thanks to the work of an 11th century monk named Ademar de Chabanis. We're going to show you some more of that in a moment, but first we'll talk about medieval instruments. Now, of course, the primary instrument in music in the Middle Ages was the human voice, and this is because of its sheer abundance and inexpense. Anyone could sing. Um, and really, in religious music, choirs were the dominant musical form. It was almost entirely uh, vocal music in churches. It was really only in secular music, non-religious music, that we started to see more traditional handheld instruments, and those were used by troubadours. And here are some examples of some. Wind instruments um, made by the mouth blowing into an instrument were recorders or horns and bagpipes, as we see here. We also have string instruments, two different kinds, um, that could either be strummed, much as this angel on the right-hand side is strumming. That would be something like a lute or a harp. And we also have some instruments that were used with bows, much like um, early violins. This one's called a rebec. And then finally, we also had keyboard instruments such as the organ and the clavichord. And we'll go ahead and play a little bit of the clavichord for you now. Next, we'll go back to talking about notation as we discuss music in manuscripts. And music was starting to become more complex, meaning that um, choirs were singing multiple harmonies at a time, and so better notation was needed of who should be singing what. And so we started to use ruling lines. Ruling lines were written to show um, where text should lie within a, a piece of parchment, and these started to be used to show pitch for nooms. The notes would be listed higher or lower on a, against a ruling line to show what their particular pitch was. And then by the 12th century, we started to see multiple ruling lines as sort of a rudimentary musical staff, and this use was spread by Cartesian monks. Let's go ahead and look at some examples of those. Antiphonals uh, were very, very large books that were dedicated entirely to music. Antiphones were sung lines from scripture or from psalms, and so we would see one large antiphonal being used by an entire choir. And these are some examples right here. Uh, these were used by monks or clergy in the divine office when they were singing. And in antiphonals, the lyrics were often listed very largely on these pages, and sometimes the lyrics also had um, small 
abbreviations. Um, and we can see here that this example shows four ruling lines with the notes listed on them right here. So this is a, definitely a later version after um, ruling lines have become more popular in noting musical notation. And next we also have missiles. Missiles were another example of manuscripts that contained music. Missiles focused on the guidelines for um, mass, for church services, and they were broken into two parts. The lectionary uh, was simply text. It included prayers and readings um, from the Bible for the clergy to read during mass. But then the other part was the gradual, which was um, responses and songs for the choir. And this particular example is a song called the Kyrie Eleison, which is still a very popular Catholic hymn. And we can see here a singular ruling line with notations, the nooms of the, of the music going above and below the line. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.